Yes, yes. I right. I have the book. <laughs> I have the singular book that, that where all of the pantomime scholarship is that old Edith Hall, uh, New Directions in Ancient Pantomime. And I, I think I read it like four times just to sort of glean what you can. But uh, that's an exciting place to be because it, it's, it's where, the, where you, you, know, you start with the foundation of scholarship, real scholarship, and then you take the creative leap from that. And so, I mean, I, I love it. Not, not exactly knowing what I'm doing is pretty exciting. Yeah, so one of the interesting things about Ancient Roman Pantomime is that uh, we were reading, while we didn't have the scripts, we had firsthand accounts of people who had gone and seen them. And there are multiple accounts where the viewer is talking about seeing this Ancient Roman Pantomime and saying, you know, we couldn't stop looking at his hands. The hands were so expressive. Like, they were communicating so much with their hands. And remember, it's a masked form with a closed mouth because they're a pantomime artist. So you're, you're wondering what kind of meaning is being crafted in, the, in their hand gestures. And also, what, what were the hand gestures themselves? We don't, you know, in Western theater, we really don't, we don't use our hands like that. You know, we use them like Italians, you know, you're like, eh, you know. Um, but in the Eastern tradition, using your hands and the mudras, are very much a part of theater. And so, you know, we forget that Rome in a lot of ways is much closer to, I mean, it's, it's near Eastern, you know, even as, as Western as it is, it, you know, you're, you're right by Turkey and, um, and the Near East. And so we thought, well, what if we took a form of theater that uses their hands from the East? And we ended up, um, working with a choreographer, Gina Stevenson, who is trained in Mohiniyattam, which is a, an Indian dance style that really uses hand, their hand gestures to express meaning. Like, this is love, I'm butchering it. But um, uh, we worked with her not to create a piece of Mohiniyattam. We didn't want to necessarily appropriate just random Indian dance into our piece. We used the choreographer uh, to help us create a new language with the director to go like, all right, I think for this piece, this is what this is going to mean. And this is what, you know, this is going to mean and, and build a gestural language and then tag it in the music so that what ultimately happens in the piece is the audience hears the, a, a section of music over and over again. And every time they hear that same piece of music, they see the same hand gesture and they begin to graft their own meaning onto the hand gestures. So, so it was really cool. It was very much a East meets West, even though I know it's a, sort of an old fashioned way of thinking about it. But, um, and then putting it on TV, because we were able to take a camera and zoom in. And really thinking about it, you know, in a stadium setting, when you don't have facial expression to convey um, meaning, it makes kind of sense that they would have to use their hands to, to say what they mean. <laughs>